Good afternoon. We uh, begin today again. We resume the uh, lecture series on six sigma, and uh, the topic today is going to be benchmarking. There will be two sessions. The first session will essentially, uh, you know, it will describe to you what benchmarking is, and in the second half of the lecture, which will be also one hour long, we'll be discussing how to do benchmarking. Those two things will be covered today. Now, to begin here, something that I want to remind you of is uh, the DMAC procedure in uh, Six Sigma. DMAC stands for define, measure, analyze, improve and control. In all this, the uh, position of A is analysis and benchmarking can actually be a key step in that analysis. You basically establish the gap between where you are and you want to be, where you want to be. This is what we will be discussing today. We will be doing that over two lectures. The first one is going to basically tell you what benchmarking is and in the second half we will discuss how to do benchmarking. What exactly is uh, benchmarking? Something we got to remember is it is a highly structured procedure. It is for acquiring, assessing and applying customer, competitor and enterprise intelligence. Basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to find out if a similar process is in action somewhere else and we will try to learn the good things from that and we will identify the gap between that process and our existing process. Once the gap is known then of course, we can bring in any kind of improvement methods to try to make sure that we move up from where we are to this point of excellence and this can be done for uh, processes, it can be done for products, it can be done for systems, it can be done almost any place where there is an activity going on or perhaps there is an activity that involves some machines, some materials, some people and so on and you are not happy with the performance of that particular system. This is what we would like to be able to improve. Let us see how we move into this. First of all, basically what do you gain by doing benchmarking? Why should you worry about benchmarking processes and products? What exactly is the gain? Is there a gain there? Well, the problem is this, no matter what market you are looking at, Customers are actually becoming more and more demanding and Santa that is you, is you are the supplier, you are the manufacturer, you must provide new features, superior performance and all those things you must provide, otherwise the customer is going to go somewhere else, he is uh, not going to like Santa that much. So basically what we are really trying to do is our mission here is to improve our existing process and processes and products to make them more competitive, that is the mission, that is the reason we do we do benchmarking. <coughs> now, where does it fit in within the uh, framework of Six Sigma? I mentioned to you Six Sigma follows this uh, DMAC process and in fact, uh, if you look at uh, the status of a particular system or a process or uh, you know some, some manufacturing unit, it might be existing today at a baseline level, that is it might be existing. So, it could be for example, CPK equal to 1. By now, by this time you should know what CPK is, it actually basically tells you how good your manufacturing process is, what is its capability in meeting customer requirements. Now let us say that today you are just able to meet the requirements that is imposed by the tolerance limits of the customer, that is your baseline. Now in the short term we might like to move up from that measure of sigma which is right now 3 sigma for you to perhaps 4 sigma or 5 sigma. Ultimately, of course, what you would like to be able to do is you would like to look at people who are at the Six Sigma level of quality and you would like to move up there. How do you get there? Well, the first thing to do, of course, is to identify this gap. Try to understand where you are. If you are already pretty good, then there is no need to change, right? But suppose you really find there is a gap between where you are and where competition is and perhaps where you should be, where you want to be, to be able to take on more, more business, for example. For that what you have to do is you have to identify this gap and this can be done when I compare A to B. I got to have two things to compare. The first thing is my baseline performance and the second point is provided by this benchmark which can be somebody else's product, somebody else's process and so on and so forth. That is the comparison I make when I try to identify this gap that is there between my performance and where that benchmark performance is. So if you look at the slide here it says. Benchmark comes in in the analyze phase of DMAT. It helps define performance objectives. So basically what you are doing with benchmarking is you are identifying the gap and therefore you are 
putting up some short term goals for yourself, you are down here at the baseline level. You want to put up some short term goal for yourself and perhaps some long term goal, which is where the benchmark really is. And that's where you'd like to be. This is basically what we'd like to be able to do. So basically the ultimate goal of benchmarking is understand where your base process is and also appreciate where that excellence, that, that level of excellence is or a process that is better than yours and therefore it is more competitive or it costs less or it's more timely and so on. Benchmarking can be done on any of those fronts, timeliness, meeting of requirements and the cost of production. Any of those things can be benchmarked. Then generally speaking, you'll find someone in the marketplace, someone out there who's got performance that is better than yours. And the advantage that he draws because of that is he gets more customer, he gets more business. This is what we'd like to be. This is another picture of the same thing. I have, of course, a short term proposition, which is when my process is out here and which is probably at the three sigma level. That's not such a good level. That's probably when my percent when my defects are at the percent level. And if I look at response y, y is shown here as the as the fraction defective. Or in other words here parts per million, that's what I've, I've designated the scale here. Currently I'm at this stage and I know to be able to excel in the marketplace I have to get out there. So I set my objective there. And this objective is actually tabled for me through this benchmarking process. The benchmarking process will tell me what is the best in industry or what is perhaps best in worldwide in a global picture sort of what is the best performance. What is it where someone can find one product or one process or one level of service that is far better than where we are today. That's actually benchmarking. That process is called benchmarking. There could be short term performance objectives that I set up in this. I may like to be just best in class. I'd like to probably uh, another objective could be that I'd like to get to six sigma level in about five years time. And perhaps what I'd like to be able to do is uh, more, remove most of the defects that I have at the present level. Any of these could be done provided I have, a, I have a benchmark to compare to. Once I have that benchmark to compare to, I get the motivation. I get the motivation to get, get up there. It's the process of identifying and learning from best practices. These are practices which are basically practiced by others who are better than I. In DMAT, like in DOE, benchmarking provides an actionable approach. It's an actionable approach in the sense, once you identify the gap, the motiv motivation becomes pretty clear. So the first thing is, of course, identification. And the second thing is identify to try to find out what is it that you want to improve, that you first identify that. Then your goal will be to learn from best practices that you find around you or in your industry or in your neighborhood or it could be global. Any of those things could be there those could be your benchmarks. What I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to do a systematic search for these best practices. Once I do that, I can identify that gap and this is the gap that I'm after. I'm here today and the excellence or the benchmark is out there. I want to be able to identify this gap. Once I know this gap, there will be that motivation for me to change. If I do not change, competition is probably going to get up there and competition is going to rob me of all the business that I have today. That's why we've got to benchmark. We've got to benchmark our processes, our products. What sort of different types of benchmarking method, methods are there in, in the, in the uh, practicing world today? There is something that we call comparative benchmarking. Basically, there, there you look at other people who are also in the same kind of business and you try to identify industry leaders. These are the people who are far ahead in the game and they are the top performers with very similar operating characteristics. So if you produce pens, there may be other guys also producing pens. If you produce bottled bottle water, there may be other people doing exactly the same. In some way, perhaps their quality is better than yours or their cost is probably lower than yours or their delivery is better than yours and so on and so forth. So something you've got to identify where he is better than you and uh, therefore this gap exists and what you'd like to be able to do is once you understand that gap, once you identify the gap, you'd like to move up from that lower strata to the strata where the benchmark is. That's what you'd like to be able to do. So that's comparative benchmarking, which is like finding out industry leaders and then trying to find out what they do, how they get that excellence level of that, that level of excellence, that excellence level of excellent level of performance. Then there could be functional 
benchmarking and this could be done for example you look at anyone not necessarily in your line of business but it could be doing an operation that's similar to what you do for example people do a lot of shipping and there's a lot of paperwork involved in uh, you know getting an order ready getting the material ready packing it up you know doing the paperwork there perhaps sending some orders and so on and so forth and then you call up your transportation people and so on and so on and so forth it's like a major process to try to take the goods that you produce or the product that you produce out there where the customer is this is a long process there are good ways for doing this and there are bad ways for doing this now if you've not compared your method your existing method to anyone perhaps your method requires some examination perhaps you should benchmark your process try to find out who are the people who are also engaged in same sort of same sort of operation which is like in this case packaging and transporting they may not be in your business at all it could be you could be uh, you know packaging printing books and packaging books to different book stalls you could be doing that there is another person who probably produces some consumer product and he is also doing something similar your products are quite different but the operation you know that you want to benchmark your operation that you would like to benchmark is that process of packaging and calling the transporter and of course the price cost delivery all those things are there that is going to be there for you to benchmark then there are also possibilities that within your company there are different departments and there are some better performers superior performers within the company itself so they could be secretaries and they have their own style of working or they could be for example in a college they could be teachers different teachers they use different teaching methods they use perhaps different media to do the uh, teaching they use different kind of lecture plan different kind of session plan some session plans are very interactive some are like chalk and talk type of thing it could be any of those things now what you'd like to perhaps do is in the class in the classroom our mission as teachers is to impart knowledge and also impart some skills so that people can carry out the problem solving task this is what we'd like to be able to do so we want to impart knowledge and also would like to impart some problem solving skills those two things would like to be able to do wisdom of course we cannot provide in the class that has to be picked up as you grow up so wisdom is something that i keep out of this so we are talking about knowledge and skills now different teachers they may have got different different means or different method, methods or different approaches to accomplish this particular goal if i get concerned that my students they are from the same population i am teaching section a and someone else is teaching section b and for some reason section b seems to be doing better there are fewer people away from the class attendance is just perfect and also they seem to be doing better when i conduct a test when we conduct a test the same test is given to section a and section b section the other section seems to be better than us one of the things i should then be doing is sit in that class for a while to try to understand what does that instructor do that i am not doing what kind of assignments is he giving what kind of interaction does he provide what does he do in the class you know does he lecture or does he really even pose problems perhaps or perhaps discuss cases or whatever it takes he might be doing something that is different when i'm doing that i'm doing benchmarking benchmarking is a way to find out what other people are doing who are better than us and then slowly adopt those processes for ourselves then i elevate my position or my level of performance from here to here where the benchmark is benchmark is a continuous process and as you'll see in the slide it's a continuous process it's a process of investigation that provides valuable input stimulating improvement the input is actually identifying that gap understanding that gap recognizing that gap and that provide that's what provides the stimulus or the motivation for the process to be changed from state a to state b it's a process of learning from others it's a practical approach it's a pragmatic approach it's not theoretical you actually go and physically observe processes and operations and then you try to find out what all things those people are doing that i'm not doing i'm always treating myself as someone who is inferior and there is a benchmark to look up to that that's the that's the stance that i'm taking and this is the stance you should take when you're open when you're open minded and you really want to improve you should take this stance that there are people who are better than us and let me find out what they are doing it's a time consuming process it's also labor intensive this is not something easy because i'll have to go through a major process of change management i'll have to change my own thinking my own operations and so on i'll also have to change people the practices that are prevailing today in my section my department my company those things also will have to change 
So there's going to be a large task involved here. There's a not going to be easy, but at least I get a very clear picture of what I want to be. That's the difference. It's not that I'm talking philosophically about improvement. I'm now saying, here's a benchmark and I want to reach there. I want to produce a product that is like this. This is something that is very concrete and therefore it provides a ready reference. If you want to understand what the gap is, it's all there for you to see and measure and so on and so forth. That's like one of the things. In fact, it can be utilized in almost any business, whether it's a production business, it's a hospital, it's a school, or it's a service facility, no matter what kind of business you are in. Perhaps there is somebody else who's also involved in the same sort of thing. Now, instead of doing the motherhood kind of thing or the abstract kind of thing, it's good to improve, it's good to improve, it's, you'll be profitable if you just improve your process. Instead of saying that, show him an example. And this I have done personally. I've taken a bunch of people who worked in a particular factory. And this is the factory where they made electronic parts. And they had a lot of defects in their production. Their processes were semi-automatic. And they had a wave soldering machine that produced these electronic parts, the electronic assemblies on these uh, printer circuit boards. And they produced a lot of defects. And management was very frustrated because management thought they had acquired this new technology and they had done some training and so on. And still they were not really getting good quality production, good quality parts. And it had gone on like that for about a year and they were still not improving. They had done everything, motivating, you know, giving people time off, go on, flexi time, whatever. They had done all those things. Still there was no improvement. In fact, it turned out that the people didn't know that this process could be done better. They just didn't know that. They had never seen one like that. It's like if you've been always, uh, you know, tasting one particular kind of sweet and you have never tried sweet made by a particular store, a particular sweet meat shop. Perhaps you'd never even imagine that the quality of that sweet could be better. And this happens so much when we are trying around and so on. It could be an experience with a, with a, with a uh, hairdresser, uh, a school, a classroom, you know, you name it. There are many, many occasions when you find that performance is better in a different location. For us then the goal is to try to understand that level of performance which is going to be our benchmark, recognize this gap there and then do whatever it takes to go from state A to state B so that I also become competitive, I also become best in class and perhaps I become best globally. That's what we would like to be able to do. What are the steps? Let's just uh, walk through these steps. And I'm going to give you some time for you to read this slide here. Basically, I'm now entering the, the uh, zone of how to do benchmarking. Well, the very first thing is try to identify the process that's in the need of improvement. This is very, very important. So you select the process and define the defect and opportunities. Opportunities would be like if, you, if your defect level was lower, then perhaps your uh, opportunities would be bigger and that sort of thing. So the very first thing you'd like to be able to do is Select a process that produces defective product. This is perhaps in the need of, in need of some sort of benchmarking. Measure the current process capability and this is where I bring in CPK, if you remember. CPK is that uh, measurement of uh, capability of a process in meeting customer requirements. CPK is that index, CPK is that measure. It's a quantitative measure. Once you've measured your present level of CPK, identify a goal, establish a goal that I want, if my CPK today is 1.33, I want to move up to 1.66. This is what I'd like to be able to go to. So you've set your target there and that's going to be a benchmark. Now what you have to do is you have to understand the detailed process, details in the process, so that you identify the needs for improvement. You are able to identify the needs for improvement. If it's a machine, for example, are there vibrations in the machine? Are the tools getting blunt too quickly? Is something a mismatch, perhaps cutting speed or something that's not quite where it should be and so on and so forth? How do you find out? For that you have to look at a better process. So what we have to do is, we have to select our organization. We have to select our organization that is much, much better than mine. So you select the organization and this could come from various places. This, this, uh, the candidate organization may come from various places. Perhaps you are friendly with some people and they have a similar business. It may not be in your line of business also, but they have an operation that is the same operation that you are trying to improve. That's all. Outline the industries or functions that perform your process. 
So you got to have a comparable process, at least something that you that is similar to what you are doing. Perhaps you could even formulate a list of world class performance. Like today, for example, I will give you an example. The Japanese production, auto production methods are thought to be right now, these days, to be nearly the best in the world. So, what are the rest of the countries doing? Their auto manufacturers are visiting Japan. They are observing the processes in Japan very, very carefully. In fact, they have been doing it in the last 10, 15 years, they have been doing that. And many have changed. In particular, for example, the US automakers, they have changed many of their practices because they benchmark their processes to what the Japanese were doing. We know that the Korean auto quality improved. How did they do it? They again set some benchmark. They again observed Japanese cars, their performances, their production methods and so on and so forth. Then they said, okay, my God, if they could do that, perhaps we could also do that. So they did some benchmark and they got there. I then contact the organization through appropriate network to try to make sure that I get access to their process. I get, I get a chance to go and see what they are doing. Perhaps I also get a chance to be able to talk to some people there. So I select the organization and I do these three, these, these steps there. Then I prepare for the visit. There is a bit of homework involved in benchmarking. You have to research the organization and ground yourself in that process. In fact, what you have got to make sure is you understand their process pretty well to be able to have your eyes open when your eyes should be open, have your ears open when your ears should be open. So perhaps you will be taking some notes and so on. So go to the website or go whatever, do some secondary research, try to find out what kind of business they are in, what are their processes, who are their suppliers, what is the quality of their supplies and so on and so forth. Try and find all of as much as you can before you go there. Then you develop a detailed questionnaire. This is very important. You've got to ask the right questions. And certainly, if you've been operating your process, you probably have half a dozen questions as it is. You probably have those questions there. So go ahead and make a list of perhaps more questions. Perhaps you'll get into nuts and bolts. Perhaps you'll get, get into some nitty gritty. How exactly do you team the tune this controller? How do you work with your vendor? When there is a problem, what do you do? And so on. What is your return policy? All those things. Write down your question. Because this is how this is going to be your instrument to collect information. Then you set up the logistics and uh, send some documents to the organization. These are basically to get the permission first of all, and you show them the kind of questions you are going to be asking them, why you are seeking that information, and what will you be doing with it, and so on. But then the kind of question that you'll be asking, give them a feel for it. It prepares them better. Perhaps at that point they'll say, "Sorry, we can't really share what we are doing." So in that case, you have to go to some other company that perhaps is a little more cooperative. Now that is actually something that you've got to do to be able to have access. I'll talk about some ethical practices in the later half of the uh, lecture, which is like uh, it'll be the second half, the second hour. Then you visit the organization. This is like one of the key steps. It's one of the key steps in benchmark. You visit the organization. And for this, first of all, you've got to make sure you're comfortable and you are confident with the homework that you have done. You got the questionnaire ready, you got the permission with you and so on and so forth. And then you try to make sure that you build a rapport with the person that you will be dealing with. You got to make sure those people, they feel comfortable talking to you and sharing information. They will be sharing a lot of information, a lot of pretty crucial information. And these are going to be real jobs for you. They are going to be really, they will probably show a lot of shortcuts that you are not familiar with. This is something that you are going to be discover, discovering. So, in fact, this is really where there is going to be a right, there has got to be a right kind of atmosphere for you to be able to get this information there. After you collected your information, after you had your interview, they filled out the questionnaire, they answered your question, you got to obviously thank them because they have given you something that would have taken you perhaps a year or two if you tried to do it on your own and perhaps a lot of experiments also. And here you are getting a jump start at that. A jump start is when your car is cold and you got to get it going somehow. So you bring another car, which is a good strong car, has a strong battery, and start that car up, then you connect the cables, and then you turn your key, and that's like a jump start. You get a jump start whenever you got a cold engine, you got to have a jump start. And you're doing a jump start. The moment you're doing benchmarking, you're doing a jump start. That's really the goal. Then, of course, in the evening, or perhaps the next day after you come back, you got to do a debriefing. This is like the people that went with you, hopefully your own company people that went with you. And they observed all these things, they also heard the answers and so on. 
you should sit down and should review all the observations that you took, compile a report of the visit. And this is the time when you try to recall because your memory is still fresh. Those things are still in your mind. Put them down on a piece of paper. Make sure you write down the answers to those, particularly those crucial questions, but you didn't quite know what to do. That is something that you've picked up by doing this benchmark. It is very, very important. You compile a list of the best practices now, and that will be by comparing your existing practice to what you saw there. And then, of course, you'll structure the whole thing. You've got to make sure you structure it appropriately so that, you know, there are different aspects of the problem that you're trying to tackle. And they are also pretty clear there. Once you've done that, you retain the new practice and you communicate that to your own people. This is very, very important. So I've walked you through six steps that start with uh, basically identifying the process that you would like to do. And then, of course, you identify the organization and you have established some sort of a uh, rapport with them. Then you prepare a questionnaire so on, go out there, collect information, come back, do a debriefing, and then you record all these things and you try to make this new process your standard practice. That's, you, that's what you would like to be able to do. Source of information, where would you find benchmark information? Of course, the best thing is to, as they say, go to the horse's mouth and get the information first hand. That's going to be definitely the best, but that's not the only source. Like in research, many times we directly implement a questionnaire. That's direct research. This is what we call primary research. But there's another way to acquire information that is called secondary research, which is like when you be going through databases, going through literature, perhaps internal publications, perhaps industry publications, perhaps you find out some trade publications, industry data firms, and so on and so forth. I've listed them here. University sources, they also have a lot of stuff there. Newspaper may report certain things, customer feedback. That's another way to try to find benchmarking information. Telephone service could be there, various types of networking could be there, reviews might be there, seminars, expert talks, talks and so on and so forth. So a lot of, lot of ways are there and today of course the internet also has become a great source for information. This is something that was not there a few years ago. Ten years ago we wanted to get a lot of information, there was no Wikipedia, there were none of these things. And you have to basically hunt, 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 like we did in the old days. We essentially went to the library, pulled out some manual, and tried to make sure the manual wasn't too old. And if that didn't suffice, then of course we tried to, uh, you know, talk to the people who were really running that kind of operation. That is going to be live. So today you can find a lot of stuff right on the internet. In fact, when you're designing a questionnaire, it's a great way to try to complete some of this secondary, secondary research. Get these questions down so that you have the right questions to ask. That's something that would be really, really good. Designing a benchmark architecture, like almost for anything, to build a house, you need need an architect, and he comes up with an architecture. He'll, this, he decides about the shape, the walls, the roof, the ceiling, the number of floors, and the layout, and so on and so forth. You got to do something like that when you go benchmark. You got to come up with the plan. Basically, what it, when it talks about designing a benchmark architecture, you're talking about the plan. What all things would be there? What is it that I'll be looking at? I'll be looking at certain types of performance. That's like pretty well the central theme of benchmarking. You've got to look at some kind of performance you're looking at. This could be, for example, the service that a customer receives from you, that, that level of performance. Or it could be the, the way a particular product performs or a service is performed. There, there could be benchmark there. Core business processes, how they are performing, that's also very, very important. Support processes and service performance, that also is something they are employing performance. Supplier performance, any of these things that give you some indication of how, what that gap is like. Is that performance all right the way it is today? Is it acceptable? Is it competitive? Is it also, uh, it's got lower cost and it's timely and it's got short lead time and all those things. If those are there, then of course you're doing fine. But to be able to find that, to be able to develop your plan for benchmarking, you got to have these information. So that's something that I got to have. What are some of these customer service measures? Let's now get into nuts and bolts a little bit. What we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to go after those measures that are really what we call the best measures when it comes to customer related measures. And uh, these actually come directly from customers. And uh, let's take a look at some of the things. It could be, for example, the overall customer satisfaction with products and services that you offer. 
that is like one thing that could be measured and this this could be measured by interviews or by rating or by a questionnaire or something like that or it could be also done by surveys that is like something that you'd like to be able to do cluster evaluations of uh, sales and service reps these are people who are interfacing with the customer remember that moment of truth moment of truth in the sense of service provision is the time is the moment when the customer is in front of the person who is delivering the service that is the moment of truth what is the customer's experience how does the customer feel when all this this interaction this interfacing is taking place so get some feedback there that that's like a great source to find out indeed if you need some improvement there customer assessments of your your organization's understanding of customer needs this is something so important i can't tell you you know this is where you know there are a lot of things that hide behind this this phrase there qfd is there because of this qfd would not be needed if we were doing a perfect job here the kano model is there because you know there were some problems in people sorting out between exciting requirements function requirements and basic requirements there was some some difference there some confusion there many people didn't understand the difference there between these three classes of requirements any of those things are almost critical for you to pick a target and then say that this is what i'm going to benchmark here and this is what i'm going to improve i'm going to target this particular type of performance to improve this is something i'd like to be able to do customer ratings how clearly uh does your organization communicate cost cost information and perhaps if there are problems with certain things uh, that the customer experience with your service or your product how does your company communicate with them at that point in time and uh, delivery timeliness this is also something for, for which you'd like to perhaps collect data so these are all various dimensions of performance what i've listed out here in this uh, slide these are various dimensions of performance any of these can be benchmarked any of these can be compared to the best in industry best in town best within your company in perhaps in some other division or best globally any of these any of these performance aspects can be compared that way customer feelings concerning how easy it is to conduct business with your company this is also something we would like to perhaps do or do some sort of a benchmark and also of course the value the customer places on your company this is also something very very important any of these things can be measured any of these can be uh, you know can be gone after and you might be able to get feedback on this and almost for each of these there is like a level of excellence there is a level of excellence that is there that will be the benchmark and the whole process of benchmark is to understand that performance can be better than where i am today and understand this gap and therefore if you want to get up there if you want to have the kind of business that this fellow has who is much better than you you got to make sure you cover this gap and for that first of all you got to do this benchmark product and service performance measure measure so these are slightly different from what we've been talking about these again get into nuts and bolts and these are a bit more specific let's take a look at this benchmarks in product and service performance these could be with accuracy reliability timeliness ease of ordering delivery packaging ease of assembly and use documentation that might be with the instruction that go with your product billing process after sales service and complaint management these are the different aspects where you could again establish benchmark there are so many instances when the sale is made and after that nobody wants to talk to you nobody from the company wants to talk to you this is pretty deadly because you probably have a question or maybe the cust- maybe the product as you opened it when you opened it out of the package maybe there was some problem with it or you didn't quite know how to twist it or how to turn it and so on so how to use the product perhaps there you had some question is there a way for you to follow up and perhaps if you are actually having a problem with your uh, you know it could be a laptop or anything like that is there a system in the company in the suppliers company that handles these complaints do they have a system like that if they don't have one they better find one they better do benchmark of this process if they do not do benchmark of this process it will never improve from wherever it is and it's very likely your next machine or your friend's machine will not be purchased from that particular store that's pretty well given your uh, product and service performance may also include there are other some other dimensions of measurement for example warranties warranty exchanges returns for example some places no questions asked 
Even if you've used the product for six months, you can bring it back. If you're not happy, you'll turn it around. You'll probably give it an exchange. And this could be done perhaps free of charge. Now, there are some car makers, for example, who provide you with a blanket, blanket guarantee. You can drive your car for 50,000 kilometers. If you have any trouble at all, no questions asked, you know, your car would be fixed. Or if within five years, if you have any difficulty, any trouble at all with your vehicle, they'll take care of it. Some of them, of course, they go, you know, they, they operate slightly differently. They'll say you pay for perhaps labor and we pay for the parts. Parts are free and you pay for the labor of fixing it. This could happen after one year. Then, of course, the uh, cost. Cost is something that you'd like to again benchmark and you'd like to make sure. The cycle time, which is like how long does it take for uh, an order to be complete, completely processed and so on and so forth. And it's also possible companies now, they also benchmark their market share. That's something that's slowly coming into being because, because shareholders, they want, they are very interested in the valuation of their whatever, whatever shares they might be holding in a particular company. They would like to make sure that those guys, they have a big fat market share. So there is no danger of going out of business. Then of course, there are business processes where performance can be measured. And uh, the business processes, of course, they have inputs, they have the process itself, then they have some output. And the result is hopefully customer satisfaction. So again, if there's a business process involved, it could be a typing pool providing some service. It could be a transportation service. It could be uh, the, the, the way students are registered or it could be the way a product is returned to a, to a store. Any of these things, these are business processes. There is an input, there is a process, then there is an output. And hopefully the final effect is going to be a satisfied customer. This is what we'd like to be able to get to. So that's like something that again, we could benchmark on. And here's a little picture of what is going on here. I have inputs and those could be in the form of people, raw materials, components, customer requirements and capital. The next step in the business process is the actual transformation process. The transformation process actually would be, it would involve some sort of design, some production, some services performed and of course the delivery of the thing. These are, these are the processing steps. The outputs are these various things, the products, the services, documentation and the results. And the effect on the customer of course is this is like the ultimate goal for doing it all, which is like customer needs are satisfied, customer problems are solved and customer requirements are met. This would be the ultimate goal. Now, any of these steps can be benchmarked. Any of these steps can be benchmarked. If you're not happy with it, if you're not happy right at the end, go back into the process a little bit and try to make sure that they are they are actually the ones that you wrote down in your ISO 9000 manual as an example. What are the means? How do we end up? How do we end up? What are the tools required for me to excel, for me to try to improve a particular process? I'm just going to give you a glimpse of that right now, because that's like a separate step. You, you've identified the gap. Now, these are the means by which you could narrow the gap. Training, communication, empowerment. And let me give you an example. Uh, 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 this was a uh, supermarket and uh, their, their deal was that uh, if you're not satisfied, you could bring the product back and would take care of it. Would, would give give something in replacement. Now, naturally, for something like a food product, you do not want the bottle to be opened or the can to be opened. If that is done, of course, the customer can only find out, by, by, he can or she can only open the thing to, to find out if the stuff is okay inside. So, a customer came back and uh, she complained about the uh, product that she got, the material that she got, and she wanted to return it. And this was, unfortunately, it was open. And it looked like you know it had been used also a little bit. But the desk, the service desk was empowered, empowered, it was empowered to provide an exchange without any questions asked. Now, this did not require approval from a supervisor or the store manager. It did not require that. The empowerment was such. What was important for the company was to retain this customer. That was important. Rather than worry about the cost of that thing that is sold, because one satisfied customer is probably going to tell her never also. That you know, I had this problem with this people with these uh, this product that I got from there, but they had absolutely no problem with it. They took it back at some point. So this, this is the kind of relationship that you'd like to be building. So their empowerment of the appropriate people would go a long way to try to make sure that is there. 
the kind of attitude changes in attitude that is also something there and obviously something that is very very important in terms of soft approaches to try to acquire improvement is management involvement. If management is involved generally speaking it shows everyone that management is concerned about it and that goes with any of those business objectives. It used to be profits but now it has expanded from there to the full balance scorecard and management is concerned about every aspect of it and that is like what we are doing. And this is this is of course these these sort of things are the commander what we call soft options to to achieve improvement. Then there are these medium strength methods that also produce improvements, and those require of course setting clear goals and objectives, sequencing your actions, putting in appropriate controls there, doing some measurements there, having the right policies and procedures. These are kind of medium options. They are medium strength options that also result in uh, result in improvement. The toughest ones of course are when you got to change the plant or some machines or perhaps you have to change the supplier because where you are today your your process is here today and the benchmark is there and when you when you when you examine the gap you find their suppliers are far better than your suppliers. They take better care in packaging, they take better care in delivery. They do not really batch their products before they ship it to you, they, they supply to you things that are just in time, their quality is perfect and so on and so forth. In that case you may have to change the supply, but this is a hard, hard option. Money might be involved, you know none of these things really come free. In fact, even the previous ones did involve some resources, but in the hard option perhaps you have to change your facilities or do something there. Perhaps you would have people with better skills and so on and so forth. Technology is also something that you would like to bring in perhaps if you want to achieve improvement. So, now you are thinking of how to how to match how to make up this gap, how to basically rise from the level of performance where I am to this level where the benchmark is. I have to really climb up there and that would require these different options. So, I have got the soft options, I have got the medium strength options and I have got the hard options. They would really require new technology, a lot of money and equipment. But if you have to survive, you have to compete in the business place. I have no choice but to do these things. That is something that would be required there. Managing change, this is also very, very important, and you've got to have a certain certain attitude. When you're approaching benchmark, you've got to have certain attitude. Do not try to reinvent the wheel. That is not necessary. I mean, this is something that like something you should not be so proud that I want to know how to make coffee myself by doing all the hit and trial and everything else. And I, you know, burn some coffee and I produce bad coffee and so on. But I do all those different experiments, not the DOE types, of course. You are doing these experiments by hit and trial. That would be like one way. In fact, many people they keep reinventing the wheel, they keep doing that because they are just too proud to say that there is something I do not really know. They think they know the best, and there is no reason to talk to anyone, and that is really that does not really save you much. Uh, borrow shamelessly. Wherever you see a good practice, adopt it. What is wrong? If somebody drives better, go out with him and kind of ask some questions. You know, what do you have in mind when you're driving? You seem to be doing such a perfect job in a crowd. I'd like to really understand. Get some, get some insight. So borrow very heavily and shamelessly. Adopt, adapt, which is like make sure you're in sync with the environment there and advance. Make sure that you're moving up. As you're making these changes, you're moving up. Imitate creatively. You do not really imitate blindly, but you got to make sure when you imitate. Like, uh, for example, many times teachers use PowerPoints, and uh, they may be able to locate a PowerPoint in the media or from a colleague that is pretty well 80% there. So they could borrow that thing and they could acknowledge. But when they bring in their creativity, they could add some extra features in it. And that has been done even the design of these slides that we have here for you. Things we have changed, we have not kept it exactly the same the way we, we found it first time or we created the first time. We kept moving, moving on it. And we adapt, that means when I when we try to get in sync with the environment, we try to do that innovatively. We bring in some some bit of innovation so that we are better off. There is a certain amount of information required in trying to do benchmarking and that would really require you to set up some metrics and so obviously you will have some benchmarks and you will have some operating statistics. These will produce some data 
and where do I use this information? I, I use information in modifying processes and again in the benchmarking process itself I might be doing that and in modifying my practices again I utilize information. So this is like a great way to visualize all the different things that you would be acquiring as information how those would be utilized in a shop once you have done your benchmarking. Process benchmarking this is like when you look in the process itself and you suspect something is not quite right with the process. At that time we will be doing process benchmarking. Again the steps is uh, steps are the same. You identify, you locate someone who is better than you, observe their process, ask some questions, try to understand what they are doing differently, also try to understand what is the impact of those differences. And if you think your process could be taken there and, and deliver a better performance, then of course go ahead and adapt, adapt, adopt whatever it takes to try to make sure your own level of performance rises from the base level to this benchmark level. That is what we would like to be able to do this. Then you have got performance benchmarking. This is always there. Let us say your uh, you know your, your performance at a, is at a certain level. Once in a while what you should do is benchmark your performance. You might be feeling pretty good with your level of performance. Like for example, you have a stock portfolio and uh, it is in the hands of a particular investment advisor. The same investment advisor, he has been doing that. Do benchmark once in a while, do compare his performance to other people, to other advisors. How are they doing? What sort of risk are they exposing people to? What sort of returns are they producing? What sort of consistency do they have in their performance and so on? And so, here I can very easily benchmark performance, and that also can be done quite easily. Then there is something that is that is of a slightly longer term perspective, and that is called strategic benchmarking. There are certain things that I need to do to be able to compete effectively. The moment I talk of, talk of com competition, I am talking about overtaking someone and I am talking about strategy. I am talking of special ways, special creative ways to get there. Uh, competitive benchmarking is like a great way to try to develop some, some strategy that would actually get you there. This is something that we would like to be able to do because in the long run, we want to outcompete other people. So, strategic benchmarking is also going to be there. There are many other many other benefits of course in benchmarking for example, uh, setting and refining the strategy, re-engineering work processes, continuous improvement and strategic planning and goal setting, problem solving, education, idea enrichment, any of these things they become they become also basically the application different applications of benchmarks. If we, if I used to benchmarking, you would be probably using them in any of these aspects. So, if you really wonder sometimes, do I really have any use for benchmarking? Well, look at these activities. Are you involved in any of those? Any of those? Then go back and look at your benchmarking notes and so on and so forth and try to see is, is there something I could do? I mean, I am I am running my operation as it is without too much trouble at all. If I am doing any of these things, there is probably a hidden scope there for my utilizing benchmarking. That is what I would like to be able to do. Widely acknowledged benefits and these are benefits which are not really cited by one or two different people. Many people cite these benefits. Those are like improving quality, improving the products and services that we provide, cost reduction, generating new ideas. There are many others of course, you end up learning, learning faster. You set up internal uh, operating target that is something that you do. You also end up with an external view of the uh, of your business. And uh, certainly the potential also rises. Once you see a high level of performance, your own mind thinks, oh, I can also be there. And perhaps you will acquire strengths and know-how and so on to, to raise basically to upgrade your own potential to get there. All these things happen because you are comparing yourself now to someone who is better than you. There are certain things of course that you must comply with. It is not something where you can get away with almost anything that you want. For example, when you are trying to benchmark with a company, with another company, please do not misrepresent your company's identity or your mission. Do not do that. Tell them the truth. Tell them why you want to do. When you are looking for information, please also be ready to share information with other companies. If you acquire something, be ready to share with others with, with permission of course. And also if you have got something special, be, be ready to share that with the company that is providing with benchmarking data. That is something that we would like to be able to do. Avoid any kind of proprietary information, avoid even asking for it. Stay away from that. 
these are some of the things that you should be doing. And of course, maintain confidentiality, that is something that you got to be able to do. Avoid any kind of inappropriate communication and contacts with competition, that is like something that you should not do. That is never really encouraged, it is not ethical, it is not good. Never propose or enter or engage in a discussion related to any agreement that you have with the competition with uh, with the objective of fixing prices and so on and so forth. If you try to do some of these things when you are trying to do benchmarking, you are really playing the wrong game. You should not be doing that. And in fact, if, if at all possible, keep your communication with the competition at the minimum level, at the very minimum level. Consult with your business people and your legal people before you initiate any com contact with any competition. This is like something where you will be safe. And you just want to make sure that uh, you know you do not really get into some sort of thing, for example, benchmarking activity or training of suppliers and customers and so on. It's very possible some unethical things might pop and you'd like to stay away from that. You'd like to make sure that the uh, documentation is, uh, you know, when, you, when you are documenting contacts and so on, make sure that you've got legal counsel before you're doing this. Whenever you participate in a, in a trade setting, please make sure that you again, you are in touch with your legal people there and you, you are seeking their advice and utilizing their advice there. Certain codes of conduct are there, that also is to be there. <coughs> when you do personal interaction, of course, be open and share the information that you have got. You got to be able to try to uh, build some sort of a trust between yourself and the other party that you are benchmarking with. You must respect each other's rights. That is like something we should be able to do. There are a bunch of uh, legal and ethical guidelines. Ethics are by far very, very important. You cannot really deny them. You cannot really even deny their existence. That is like something. If we are denying this, of course, we are going to be irresponsible and pretty soon probably we will be out of business. Legality is something again we got to respect because we are all part of the same system there. That is like something we cannot really uh, ignore. Proprietary information, again, make sure you consult with your legal people to understand that, uh, you know, there, there, there are certain protocols to maintain, certain secrets to maintain and so on. That is something, again, you would like to be able to do. That is very, very important. Intellectual property, this is like something that is also become important. Read through these slides and I put them there for you to take your time and read them and make sure that you fully appreciate when you are engaging in something that brings you in contact with another, another company, you got to make sure you respect these uh, protocols. They are, they are going to be absolutely important. What sort of summary can we then draw out of the code of conduct business? Keep your benchmarking process legal. Be willing to give what you get. So, make sure that you have the sharing also in your mind. Respect confidentiality. That is like something that I would like to urge you. To, to make sure that you protect. Keep information internal, I mean without permission you cannot really, you should not really share anything with other people there. And any kind of contact that you build with benchmarking, make good use of them, that is like something that you should do. Do not refer to anything that you that you acquire in the, uh, in the process of uh, benchmarking without the permission of the people who have provided you with that, provided you with that information. And also kindly be prepared. Prepared means you do your homework before you show up for benchmarking. This is very, very important. You should be ready. You should have your objectives laid out. You should have your process really clearly understood and uh, perhaps sketched out. You should have the list of questions there. You should have the uh, right approach to collect data and so on and so forth. And uh, obviously, make sure that you do your debriefing and so on. And when you come back, you will have a good time in implementing the good practice that you have seen around. We will continue with this. In the next session, we will continue with benchmarking. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.